yeah, so they don't always go pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and try and take out all the rest of the relays. Might have to get rough, maybe not, but I'll take them one at a time. Here we go. Hey guys, it's Andy. Thanks for watching. Well, the long-awaited control board rebuild for a GE side-by-side -side refrigerator. This repair is, I'll be up front, kind of a beast. Um, has a lot to do with this conformal coating. It looks kind of like epoxy or some kind of uh, super glue that they put on the board. It's meant to protect all the components from corrosion, all the connections and whatnot. What ends up happening though is it glues the components to the board itself. So you have to end up being a little bit rough. I had to use pliers to like pop these off once I got the solder off of the backside. So get as much of the solder off as you can. And then I used pliers. You just have to be fairly rough to pop this off. And what ends up happening is these pins will sometimes rip off and get left in the board. Not a huge deal. You basically just grab from the same side the components on with a pair of pliers and put your soldering iron on the back side of that pin. And then the pin will pull out this way. I'll try and be as quick as I can with the video. Keep it as short as possible. Um, it's one of these videos that's a little difficult to make just because you got to get really tight shots and also work with both hands at the same time. So I'll try and uh, be as clear as I can along the way. Basically there's a big L-shaped relay here, either five or six of these small sugar cube relays. You've got two uh, resistors. These are for your fan motors. If you find that these are brown or black, go ahead and replace your evaporator fan motor as well because that shorted internally and caused your board to fail. Then there's also, with the rebuild kit, four of them here. Um, they tend to, instead of being flat on top like a Coke can, they'll bulge up or they'll pooch out, and that's a failed board. There are some boards that will not be rebuildable, especially on that large L-shaped relay. Sometimes it looks like a small bonfire has built. If it's caused damage to the pad that that solder sticks to, um, if it's um, down to the internal of this green board, um, it's beyond repair and you would have to replace the board. It's non-rebuildable. But if yours is in okay shape where the solder pad is still there and you can still stick, stick solder to it, um, you might be able to get by on the cheap. If you already have a soldering iron, you might be able to save yourself some money as well. But this one I picked up for about 20 bucks on Amazon. I actually really like it. It's got an adjustable control. I'll try and leave a link for that in the, in the uh, description. Also, if you need a rebuild kit for one of these, um, if you purchase it through graceappliance.com, I'll leave that link. Um, you'll also get a free ice surrender, which is a frozen water line tool. So in case you ever have a frozen water line on your side-by-side -side GE, um, the symptom would be your ice maker works, but your dispenser does not. That's pretty typical on these GEs, as well as a failed control board. Typical symptoms for a failed control board will be clicking relays, a burned solder joint on the back side of that L-shaped one, bulging uh, capacitors like we talked about, or the brown or black resistors. Let me show you how it's done. A uh, quick disclaimer, I'm not responsible for any damage to your board, yourself, your property, anybody else's property. You should be responsible for your own actions, just as we all should be. Thanks for watching. Let's get going. Okay, the tools that you'll need for this job obviously a soldering iron. This is a 60 watt with adjustable um, heat. I just leave it cranked up all the way. So pretty standard tip on the front. You'll need a solder sucker. Some diagonal snips. And of course some solder. Here's the basic concept. You're going to have a component, like a relay, that'll have solder on the pins. Take your soldering iron and your solder sucker, charge it. You heat up the solder that surrounds the pin. Try not to leave your soldering iron in place for longer than two or three seconds because you don't want to damage the board. But you melt the solder, then 
almost before you take that soldering iron away. This plastic tip may touch the soldering iron and that's okay, no problem. You melt the solder, get it liquefied, put that down, and suck the solder away. And then you can extend this pin beyond the end of the solder sucker and push out any excess solder that you might have. Heat it up till it, till it liquefies, and then suck the solder away. Let me see if I can get you a close-up shot of adding solder and taking solder away. Heat it up. Touch your solder. Remove the heat. And then it changes colors and whenever it solidifies. So you don't need to add a whole lot. Basically just mound it up to the top of where the pan is or just below it. And then to remove the solder, take your solder sucker and charge it. Touch your iron until the solder liquefies like this. And you see how there's still just a little bit more, so we're going to repeat that process. Just like that. If you find that you've got buildup of this kind of formal coating, a lot of times you can just take your iron and kind of burn it away a little bit. Flatten it out if you had to. Another thing you may run into is doing things like this will cause those holes to clog up. And that's no problem either. Just set your relay where you need those pins to pass through. Flip your board over. And then if you'll heat up that where that pin goes through, it pops right through. And there's all my pins through. So using that same concept, all the pins that are on your relay, just go through and add solder to each of those. Just hold still for a second while they solidify, and that relay is done.
if you'll touch the solder to the iron it gets a better connection to the pen so it heats up a lot faster for you and that's all of our relays next thing we'll tackle is going to be these resistors find the corresponding pins on the other side there is no forwards or backwards on these so you really don't have to worry about what what direction they face same concept though take the solder away I'm just going to cut out these resistors. You can see they've got that same kind of formal coating on there, so it's kind of fighting against me. Then you can just grab on from the other side, heat it up. Same thing on this side, when you're trying to get the new component through, you can heat up the existing solder that was left over as you're pushing through. If you bend them out like this, it kind of helps keep them in place while you solder. All right, there's our resistors. As I mentioned, if uh, either one of those is burned, go ahead and put a new evaporator fan motor on your fridge as well. Next, we're gonna tackle these capacitors. These are gonna be tough to get to because of all the surrounding uh, components. Um, so these as well, we may have to be just a little bit rough on to get them out of there. Um, we're gonna take both of these out at the same time just so we have a little bit more space to work as we go. On these, our posts are actually the same length. They've been cut off, um, but you still have the stripe. That's the one that's gonna go towards that line on the circle. So what you may find is it's difficult to get these fed through because you've got solder buildup. 
in the old hole where it's supposed to pass through. So if you get the post lined up and it doesn't want to push through, just apply heat to the other side and that's going to melt the solder that's there. Just apply a little bit of heat to melt whatever solder was still in there and that allowed those pins to pass through. Put my pinky on top of it so I can hold them in place while I solder. And there you go guys, that's how it's done. You just replaced all the relays on your control board, uh, the resistors for your fan motors, and the troublesome capacitors that you that you see fail most often on these control boards. If you own a GE fridge long enough, uh, you're going to have to do a control board. They're just that awful, uh, these boards. But, um, you know, if you wanted to, you could keep one of these rebuild kits on hand, tape it to the back of your fridge just in case you ever need it, or just do a preemptive rebuild and just make it preventative maintenance. Either way, that'll get a uh, little more life out of the board you have and hopefully save you some money not having to buy a $300 control board. Thanks for watching. Look forward to hearing from you.